So this is a quick recap. This is a quick recap for the lecture I've just done on data flow. Sorry, not data flow diagrams, entity relationship diagrams. So short video just to recap it. So what is an entity relationship diagram? Uh, an entity relationship diagram follows on from a data flow diagram because it describes the data stores inside of it. So another part of SSADM, which is Structured Systems Analysis Design Methodology. So uh, the tools you can use to describe a system are entity relationship diagrams, data flow diagrams, and also case tools, which will be the next video. So what do we want to understand? We want to understand what consists of an entity relationship diagram. Well, it consists of entities, the tables, um, relationships between the tables and attributes or columns, sometimes they're called. Then your task is to build your own database using Visio, a design for it. Um, OK, so the first thing you need to understand is what are primary and foreign keys and attributes and entities. So this table here is a student table. It is called an entity. It consists of attributes, student ID, first name, last name and course ID. There are primary keys. They are unique things that identify a table such as student ID. This is not the same as this one or this one. In fact, it should be impossible with a primary key for it ever to be duplicated. Then you have foreign keys. Foreign keys are what connect tables up. So, for example, uh, we have course ID here. This is the foreign key. Why? Because it connects to our course table here. In our course table, course ID is the primary key, but in the student table, course ID is the foreign key. So the foreign key can be the same. So we've got Amanda is in the same class as Jim on the same course as Jim. So they're both in C002. But instead of having to put all the information about that course in every row, we can just connect their student record to the course table using the foreign key course ID, uh, which is the primary key in this course table. So that connects this to this. And then there are relationships, which I'm going to come on to in more detail in a second. So a relationship describes how many courses a student can have. Well, probably one student can have many, one or many courses. Which is what this next table is about. So relationships between tables or cardinality, you have this one, which means one. So that means there can only be uh, one. For example. Student to one student room. Um, but then you might have one and only one. There can only be one student login for a, a particular a student record. So, and, and that is something that will be completely unique forever. There will never be, there will never be another username like that. It's completely unique to identify that student. Whereas a student who has one room and only one room, like, you know, next year that room could be assigned to a different student, but they only have one room unless they're very rich and then maybe they, maybe they have two. But so if you want to describe the relationship between two tables where it's like just one of each, then you use one um, or you can use one and only one. If you want to describe one and many, which is a very common one, um, or, uh, you can use this one. Uh, if you want to describe um, uh, zero or one, you could use that one. Uh, and if you want to describe uh, one or or many, so this one is many, so not just one, but many. And this one is either one or many, then you could use that relationship. How can you then use these in a database? So here's a description of the difference between one and only one, which is the one with double lines and one and a description here. You might want to pause the video and read that, but it's what I've just said. But how can you use these relationships? Well, this is an example of an ordering system uh, where you're describing the supplier, the products they have, um, details of the order, um, order delivery detail, uh, the order, uh, and it's describing the relationship between, say, the supplier and the product. So a supplier will have one or many products. 
it would be impossible for a supplier not to have any products. They need to have at least one or many. Uh, other relationships. So this is the one we were just discussing. So that means one and only one. So uh, an order can only have one and only one headquarters. So the headquarters is completely unique and will never change. Uh, and and uh, um, okay. So in our example, the restaurant example, uh, we were describing last week. So if we open up Visio for that one, so this one open in app. This one was describing a restaurant. We described level zero and level one. So level zero gives us a basic overview of the system. So these are our entities in our data flow diagram. Entities are different in data flow diagrams as they are in entity relationship diagrams. So we've got one main process and different uh, entities, and then the, the data flow of the lines between them. And then we've got data flow level one, which describes this process in a lot more detail. And you can see here, we've got the, uh, the different uh, the customer, makes an order, that order is received, that's a process, it either goes to the kitchen or it goes into another process called update goods sold file. And then that goes into a data store, which then comes out to produce manager reports that goes to a manager. So we're describing in an entity relationship diagram these data stores. So what I want you to do, and if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put the materials uh, or a, a, an example of the slides and the materials in the link below. Um, what I wanted to describe is that, that restaurant database. So how many tables are we going to have? Customer, order, menu, payment. Uh, what are the primary keys? What are the foreign keys? What are the relationships between them? And then if you're doing this assignment, you need to put these things into your assignment. Uh, the entity relationship diagrams, um, copy them into Visio, explain the symbols and the rules of cardinality, and that is it. 